Okay, so in the previous video, I made this web app and I was giving you some basic introduction to web apps. And what I did, I made this input box. When somebody enters information, we click run it and it basically adds a new record to our spreadsheet with the name and the date entered. Now, if you haven't watched that video, watch the part one and then come back to this. If you have, then here we'll expand on this a little bit. So what I want to do, I want to add a couple of more fields for the user. We'll do another text box for the user to enter. And maybe we'll do also like a drop down box for somebody to select something. And then we'll see how we can set multiple things to our script side and hopefully get our results saved to here, to our spreadsheet. First of all, let's go to our HTML and create those boxes. So this is going to be the label. Now to make sure these things stay on different lines, I'm going to just wrap them in a div element. And as I said, I'm not going to cover HTML in these videos. If you guys want me to do HTML tutorials, I'll do them and you can watch those separately. So I'll do this. That's the username and I'm going to copy that whole thing and paste again. So let's add like first name, last name. And that's just the text for the screen. So when somebody looks at this, it's going to say like first name here, right? Pretty much here. Instead of username, I'll do F name. Or we do FN short for first name and LN short for last name. And that's our two divs. And then finally, I'm going to do another one. And this one will do some sort of drop down. So that will be our HTML select boxes. And in select boxes, you'll have this option. And those would be the options people would be selecting from. Google Sheets. And we'll do another option. Maybe two more. Blue Excel. Maybe we'll add numbers here in the mix too. Here we go. So now if I save this, if I go back and look, and by the way, the way I get to this, just to refresh your memory, I go under publish and deploy as web app, and I'm going to open the latest code. There it is. Now I have first name, last name, and I have this drop down. That's going to be one of those options. Now for this drop down, I have to give it some sort of ID so I can get some information from it. I'll call this app and maybe we'll want some label on the left. So our user knows what they're supposed to enter here. So we'll do label. I'll just copy and paste application, something like that. So I'm going to save this. If I go back and refresh, See, there's our first name, last name, application. And again, that's the button, which should probably also be in a div. Just for good practice here. Here we go. So I'm going to go to my head section and do style container. And here we'll do a class, I'll call it form element, I guess, something like that. And since it's a class, it should have a dot in front of it. And that's going to be our CSS stuff that's going to go here. And I'm simply just going to create margin from the bottom. And I'll do like 15 
pixel margin something like that and now we have to use that form element I'll call it form row and we have to give that class to this divs and now I have to change that for all of these so I'll do it for this div this div and this div so all of those divs should have that form row class and if I refresh now see now we have some space between those lines and that should be enough CSS in this now what we really care about is grabbing our information from these different IDs, first names, last names, and the drop down and adding it to our spreadsheet. So here, if you remember, we used to get our text from the box and that ID used to be different. I just changed it. So now it's FN for first name. So I'm going to match that and I'll just call it first name as the variable so that's that now uh, we have to pass not only the first name but a few other things to this function and we can only pass it in a single variable so what we have to do we have to create an object where we're going to be storing all this information so instead of doing this and creating one line per each uh, name well, we'll still have to kind of do that, but at least I'm going to first create an object. I'll call it user info, and that will be an object. It will be empty for now, and then I'll just assign some properties. I'll say user info dot first name. That will be this first name information. Then we're going to do a couple of more of those so we need to do this ln for last name right and that's going to be last name as the property for that and finally the last one was the app id and that's this get element by id app and i'll just call it app so all of this is going to be one object with three properties, first name, last name, and app. And that's going to be our user info object. And then we'll just send that user info object to our script. We need to clear all those boxes. Uh, it's going to be a lot of repeating things here. I don't really like doing it this way, but to make this simple, I guess I'll keep this like this. Otherwise, it's going to get too complicated. And finally, we're just going to clear what user enters in those boxes. That's that. So that's just grabbing the information from the form so far. And then we're going to send it to our function in this user info object. Now we need to go to our code side. There it is. And this, instead of being name, user info to, let's match that. So now we're going to pass that object. And that object is going to have the same properties that I just made here. So it's going to be user info first name. So on our code side, see, instead of being this name, that's going to be user info first name as the first column. And then I'm going to use last name as the second column comma last name and comma as the third column we'll do the app thingy so that's the app and then we'll do the date as the column number four so now i'm creating an array with those four arguments now you should probably instead of just inserting to your spreadsheet first check all of this information first with some if statements and make sure that it's some valid information before you enter it to the spreadsheet. But again, I'm going to keep some of these things basic so that it's easy to understand for somebody that starts with this. So I'm going to have all of those values and I'm going to append the row. So first of all, let me just clear what's in our current spreadsheet. 
probably name those columns here as well. So we have first name, last name, app, and date. So first, last, app, and date. Something like this. So this is where we're going to enter that information. The rest should be fine the way it is. So I'm just going to refresh this and let's test this and see what happens. So I'm going to go under first name and I'm going to call this, there it is, Anna Smith and application, we should probably spell this right, but that's fine. It's going to be Google Sheets, I run that. Let's go check it out. Awesome. All great. Now let's try one more. Let's do John Doe and let's try to use a different application, run it, and here we go. That's our John Doe. I'm just going to correct that application thing really quickly. There it is. Here we go. And then again, you will have to deploy this all over again if you're publishing this version. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that it's going to get really, really cluttered here with all of this CSS, if you're styling more, with all of this HTML and script all being in one place. So it's a better idea to just separate these things out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first create two more HTML files. So one I'm going to do to do all the styles in there. The other one I'm going to do for all the scripts. File new, HTML file. So this is going to be page CSS, file new, HTML file, and this will be page JS for JavaScript. You can name those anything you want. Now in this page first, I don't need all of this stuff that they're giving us. So it's just going to be empty. And what we want to do, we want to just go and grab the style part of our HTML and move it over to our CSS. Keep in mind that this is still HTML. So you cannot just do CSS as plain. It is HTML still with the style tags. And the same thing is going to be with JavaScript. So you're going to have to keep your script tags. I don't know why they do it like that. It's kind of stupid, but it is what it is. So save that. That's our script here. Now we need to include this files in here. So you can do that by doing this, some sort of inline script that's going to run some JavaScript in here in this place. So if you've done some PHP coding, this is kind of similar to that. So you do like this and here I'm going to do this function include and we're going to pass that name for what we want to include. The name is see page dash CSS. So page dash CSS. And we have to probably do the semicolon, although I don't think that will matter. So then we need to also include that JavaScript in here in the bottom. So we're going to repeat that. So that's going to be page dash JS. We're going to just save this. So now if I refresh this, see it's, it's not going to work because it doesn't know what include really means. So we have to create a function include that will be basically creating that partial and loading it in here. So to create that, we're going to go to our scripts and we're going to create a function and we're going to call it include. And what this function needs to return is very similar to this. We're going to create HTML output from file. Now that file is going to come from, see this, this is the parameter we're passing the actual file name and that parameter is going to be here. So we'll do file name and that's going to be now the file name, but we want to get the actual text, get the content of that. 
and that's what we need to return with this function. So now this include function is gonna grab whatever file name we pass in here, and then we're gonna take that and we will just use that here to create that HTML and plug it in that position. And now because we're doing this partial thing, this thing that we did previously to get the content, we can no longer do it like this because now it's not just one file as an output. We need to create that file that contains this multiple pieces in it. And for that reason, instead of doing this create HTML output from a file, we're going to use this create template from a file and that is still going to be page, the file name, and we're going to do dot evaluate to actually run. And this evaluate is going to run all that inner, basically all the stuff to create the final result out of this. And with this, we should be able to make that work. So let's check this out. I'm going to save this. Go back and refresh. So now we're loading that content dynamically using our include function that we've created. And we're basically creating a template file from all of this and rendering it. So this way we can now separate our code. So every time now I have to write more JavaScript, I can just go here and do that. Every time I need to add some more CSS, I can go here and do that. And it's going to be more modular and easy to manage. Now, just to finally test this out again, let's just create another option here, other, save it to make sure all of this works. I'm going to refresh and we're going to call this me, my last name, I guess, and other run that. And let's go check. Here we go still works fine. So that's a little bit about passing a few different arguments from your user side to your script side and also how to make this whole thing a little more modular so you can actually work with this when you have a little larger project. And that should be enough for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.